Welcome to this review of the Zeiss Discogon 28mm f2 fully manual lens. Um, let's jump straight into this review by talking about image quality. Um, and instead of me talking and showing you pictures of flowers or whatever, I want to show you a video that I shot in Madrid uh, two weeks before the lockdown that uses solely this lens. The thing I love about the image quality on this lens is it has this kind of renowned kind of 3D, what they call 3D pop to the image. And I think it's something to do with the floating element lens design, apparently. Uh, I'm not all that technical, to be honest with you. I don't really care about that kind of stuff. I just care about the results. Um, but as you can see from this sort of frame here, um, even though the depth of field is not that shallow and the sort of background is not that blurred out, the, the model here really pops out of the frame. And that's just something that I've found with these Zeiss lenses. Um, that it's like kind of a look that I haven't found with other lenses. Um, I mean, I've tried to go native, the native route in the past, but I always come back to these Zeiss. And it's not just about the image quality, it's also about the build and specifically the manual focus. So let's talk about the build on this Zeiss. So it's fully metal, uh, it's brass I believe with a front chromed element, a front chromed ring here. Really nice weighted, uh, feels just really high quality as you would expect from Zeiss. The focus ring is like silky smooth. Um, when you're focusing on this lens, it's, it's a dream really. Um, you can really nail the focus with precision. Unlike the Sigma, which was my last review, where the uh, focus ring, uh, the manual focus on it was garbage in all fairness. Great looking lens, and obviously the lens wasn't designed for manual focus anyway, but this lens is on another level in terms of quality of focus. It's really nicely dampened, um, like I say, it's just, it just oozes quality. Um, you can just tell when you're holding it that you've got a, a really well engineered uh, lens here at the end of the day. Um, in terms of the price, I mean, I think I paid about, um, I think this, I got this second hand off a website called MPB, I believe. I'll stick a link in the description. They sell second hand camera gear. I found them to be a good company to use. I think I paid 500 quid for this lens and I believe when it was new it was more like 900 or something um, so I got a good deal so when you compare that price 500 quid uh, if you were going to get another lens um, like a say a 25mm f1.4 Leica Panasonic um, it's not all that much more uh, considering you're getting uh, you know um, a fully metal construction uh, gorgeous image quality, amazing manual focus, um, the Zeiss quality that they're known for. I mean, I used to use the contacts line of Zeiss. That's that's what I started out using when I got the GH5 initially. I've never really used native lenses all that much, uh, but I, I, I moved to these because uh, they're a little bit newer. They're sort of slight redesigns, so they handle flares better. And um, you can get these serviced by Zeiss because they're still current, whereas the contacts are no longer able to get serviced. This specific 28mm f2 is based on a the contacts 28mm f2, which if you try and look on eBay for that lens, um, you can really only get it from Japan and you have to import it and it's probably more than buying this. But that lens has got an amazing reputation. It's called the Hollywood lens. This is the second generation of that Hollywood lens. 
because it's just got this kind of pop to the image. Uh, it's really, you know, like I tried to show it to you in that, that frame, but there's just something about this, the image of this lens. I just love it. This is my main lens. Use this you know, sort of 80% of the time and when I'm not using this, I've got a planar 50mm f1.7 uh, and I'm using that more telephoto lens for closer shots. So between this and the 50mm planar, it kind of covers most of my needs as a narrative filmmaker. Um, so kind of in summary really, I mean, I, you know, I give this lens a 10 out of 10. Uh, I really do love this lens and I highly recommend this lens. I use it on a uh, the cheap speed booster brand. Mitocon, no, what are they called? Can't remember, but I'll put a link in the description with the exact uh, speed booster that I use. Haven't found any um, effects of the image quality from using that. Um, and I would like, you know, if you haven't used like these fully manual Zeisses, I would highly recommend you buy one um, and try it out. You can always return it. I, I think you'd be pleasantly surprised um, at how how nice they are to use and the image that you get off them. Uh, it's more organic I find to these modern lenses. Still sharp when you stop down to kind of like, you know, f5.6 razor, razor sharp, but I kind of like to use it fully open. I don't want it to be razor sharp um, when I'm using it for filmmaking. It's, it's razor sharp in the center, but um, you know, it's not as sharp around the edges at wide open. Um, but that's the kind of look I, I like to get from the lens anyway. So, and, and it's a really close focusing lens as well. And you can really, um, you, you get more of that pop the closer you get really. It's just, um, yeah, solid, absolutely solid lens. Highly recommend it. Check it out. I think you'll love it.